right. Um, welcome to the episode of Athletics for Life podcast. We're here with uh, Durbin. He's a new teacher at ISU. A new teacher. Um, so this is just my first time meeting Durbin. Uh, so why don't you share a little bit about yourself, your history with sports and athletics, and kind of how you ended up here at ISU. All right. So my life started in the Netherlands, in a very small town called Baarlrecht, just on the Rotterdam. I think maybe people are familiar with the uh, city of Rotterdam. Uh, I started almost swimming as soon as I was born. My parents threw me in the water very early. I played uh, water polo my whole life. That's why we're also in, uh, in a swimming pool. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I spent my lifetime uh, in the Netherlands, in that small town Baarlrecht, until I was 18, 19 years old. Then I got the opportunity to play uh, professional water polo. So after my education as a PE teacher, I moved to uh, Italy. Okay. I played there for uh, six months, just uh, for the time from December till uh, June. And at that time, uh, a French team spotted me and said, all right, would you come uh, play for us? So I played there for four years. And then I played in Greece, um, Malta, Switzerland. Oh. And, uh, in 2000, when I was playing in France, uh, we qualified for the Olympic Games in 2000 in Sydney for uh, yeah, a tremendous experience. I still have yeah, clothes yeah. from it. Lovely, so I put them out well. So this is 20 years old. And now I feel still looks good. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel very old now. <laughs> 20 years back. Ooh, I'm already 20 years out of the uh, out of Olympic Games. And uh, so after my career, my wife and I uh, thought that uh, because the water polo in general is not a very stable mm-hmm. uh, sport. It's not like football yeah, where you yeah. have managers and your contract. The contract is not mer- uh, yeah, it's not worth a lot. So uh, in, when I was around 30, I said, we want to start a family, but we needed to have some more security. So then we moved uh, together, we moved to Thailand, and then our first uh, girl was born there. And to get even more stability, uh, we went to uh, Qatar, where uh, healthcare is really good, the package of uh, the school. So mm-hmm. we both, we're both sure. teachers, my wife and I are both teachers. And then uh, my international teaching career, uh, yeah, let's say started really off in, uh, in Qatar. We, we stayed there for five years. In Qatar, we moved to Egypt, Egypt, Sudan, and now uh, here in Mongolia. And I'm very I'm happy to be here. And I'm happy that you're here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you you just played water polo your whole life. Did you play other sports when you were younger? Uh, what we always did, we were outside the, uh, almost every single minute as soon as we came home. And uh, the rule was when the lights uh, go out, yeah. that's the time you come I in. I remember those times. Yeah. So <laughs> we made up games with because I was, yeah. Uh, we were living in a small community. Mm-hmm. It's not like a compound, but it's sort of with a lot of houses together, playground in the middle, uh, uh, people who got upset because balls were flying in their garden, yeah, yeah, yeah. we trashed their gardens and go back and forth. We made all kinds of games, uh, handball type things or football type things, but we were always outside playing. And I think playing in general, that really helps any athlete. And I think that athletes should not focus very early in a very early stage on uh, on one type of sports. So even if they choose, let's say basketball, they need to have during basketball practice, they need to do a lot of other sports, especially when they're younger. And uh, don't specialize way too early. I think that a lot of athletes are specializing way too early. Do you think that helped you in your water polo career? Those that play outside and the other kind of sports? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Also my education in, as a physical education teacher, we go through a lot of sports. So, yeah. like for example, yeah. we did uh, we did wrestling, we did judo, okay. uh, boxing, gymnastics, karate, gymnastics, yeah. uh, strengthening your core and things like that. But for me, as a, if I look back, that playing outside to yeah understand the speed of the ball, understand uh, very holistic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. just learning yeah. how to fall. You know, yeah. I, I, I coached like, uh, like a ECA wrestling and after school wrestling club uh, one year at, at ASU. And just some kids have no clue how to fall down. You know, like, you're like, you're going to get hurt just falling. You know, you don't know how to brace themselves yeah. or that the ground's coming up pretty fast. Wow. I think um, professional soccer, football, uh, for your house European, is, is a pure example. Let them learn how to fall. They still have injuries with uh, broken uh, clavicular. I'm saying, if you know how to fall, even when it goes fast and it's in, in your, in your uh, blood, in your system, you will not break it. Yeah. 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 You, you will fall and you, and, and you roll over. Very important. I've never met someone who went to the Olympics. How was that whole experience for you as a person? Yeah, it was, uh, it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. I missed out in, nine, in, uh, in Atlanta, yeah. so four years earlier. 96, right? Yeah, yeah 96. Yeah. Just because I, the coach thought I was too young. 
Okay. And uh, he chose one more experienced player. And uh, but I said, all right, I still want to go. So we, we put everything aside to uh, work hard, yeah. and uh, we managed to qualify uh, for City. So that was very happy. And then I was part of the part of the team. And it just it was an amazing experience. They also say that uh, that Sydney was one of the first new Olympic Games. I think we had over ten thousand athletes. It was wow. a village. There was a, yeah, a massive uh, food court where twenty four hours uh, a day food was served because of the different types of sports. It's amazing to see a different type of athlete. I still remember that uh, the Chinese basketball player uh, Yao Ming Yao Ming was How there, was that game, and, huh? and he was yeah. walking next to one of the Chinese gymnasts. Okay. And just <laughs> that difference. Wow. And then you have uh, the 100 plus judo people who sit at a table and you see what amount of energy they need to eat, what kind of calories they need to eat. Uh, it's just amazing to see. And you know, then you walk in and Patrick Crafton or tennis players just sitting there, right? Just, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just being part of the, the whole community. Is that something that, like, as you were younger, did you set your goals to make the Olympics or was it? I'm just going to play water polo. I'm good at this. I'm going to pursue, and it just kind of naturally happened. Uh, kind of how did? No, as soon as I, yeah, and then when you were younger, you know if you're good in the sport, yes sure. or no. And uh, I knew that I was good at the sport. So then I set immediately. You set targets. So what is yeah. your target? What could you do? And then Olympic Games, playing professional water polo was one of my targets. Mm. And uh, but I must say, it's you have must have luck. In, I think in every oh, sure. so I had I almost stopped playing water polo when I was uh, 18, 19 years old because wow. there was because I was at the top in the Netherlands and that was it. Yeah. So we became Dutch national champion. I became top scorer at several times. So I didn't really have a thrive anymore. So I thought, all right, I'll move to physiotherapy to be a physiotherapist. Yeah. I started for uh, three, four months. And then Italy approached me, okay. and then it was okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> go back again. And that was yeah. Awesome. Then, uh, then, and you, you make from water polo in the Netherlands, you go to professional, which meaning from even I put a lot of effort in in the Netherlands, yeah. like at least uh, two or three hours a day, moving to six hours a day. Wow! So I, my level jumped up from, from a semi-pro to professional. Yeah, that, wow. that's uh, you see that that's that, that's what you need, and and. The, biggest thing is that you don't have to worry about anything else. The only thing you do yeah, is yeah. play water polo. Eat, sleep and train, right? Yeah, and wow. that's what you do. And you do something you love. So it's, it, it seems like a burden to people, to some, but for me, it was just it was the best thing that could happen to me. Yeah, yeah. It, it sounds a lot like, you know, in the States going to university for sport. You know, I went to wrestling and, you know, that's kind of the central focus of our of your life. Yeah. We still had classes, but at times, those were second fiddle to wrestling, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you're just there to wrestle. Yeah, to, and that's the sport. great thing. My parents, when I was 16, I already offered to play in Greece, but we refused because okay. I first build your uh, Dutch yeah, parents, yeah, yeah, Dutch parents, <laughs> Dutch parents, build yeah. your education. Yeah. All right, so I graduated from uh, physical education. I had my bachelor in my pocket. Yeah, and then it was okay as soon as I got the opportunity, and then my wife supported me. She said, "Also, oh, yeah, just go." And uh, then I went. Uh, yeah, because we always talk about student athletes, right? And yeah. Coming from the Dutch system, my parents are the same. It's always, you know, you got to get some bachelor on academics. What do you look back at that? Were you happy with the parents that they pushed you also that, in that direction? Because in the states, it might be different a lot, right? Uh, depends on some really high level athletes. They might just okay go. Ben was a high level athlete. Go for so, sport, you know. Right. Like, uh, but there are parents that are the same way. Just you know, your education is important. Mm -hmm. Get that. Sports might not work out, you know, yeah. you need something to fall back on. At the time, were you, did you agree with your parents? Did you fight them on it? Like, uh, <laughs> this is my uh, future. You don't know, fight with Dutch parents. But, you know? <laughs> okay. uh, it's, it's, it's not like a real fight because you understand yourself. Yeah. If I was a football player, it would have been different. Yeah. If I would yeah. play soccer or football, yeah. then it would have been different. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you can make millions, right? If, I, if you're in that league, then it's, 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 it's worth different. the gamble. But with water polo, it's not like it's not worth the gamble because yeah. where do you end up? It would have been great if there would be uh, a combination of okay, I can do my education and I can be a professional athlete. In some sports now in the Netherlands, that is developing or it is it, it is there, but in water polo, it's not. Also, mm -hmm. because internationally, the Netherlands does not have the level that you're always competing with the first six, the first eight of the world. Gotcha. 
looking back at the, uh, we talked about this too, uh, at the Olympics, at your results, that, that's not something that you remember of that Olympics, because our, our kids are always about, you know, want to go to a tournament and they want to win, and if they don't win, the whole tournament was like, ah. What do you look, if, 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 at your result, if you look back at that, is that, that is impact or does it really? No, it has no impact also because we in the Netherlands, if you look just plain at the Netherlands, and I think you can compare it to a very small school. If you're a small school, the pool you can pick from okay. is small. Okay. Okay. So then already going, competing, making a team, competing in a tournament is already something mm. great. Mm. And if you're competing to a big school, which has over 2000 students, <laughs> then it's not even fair to compare the level. Yeah, yeah. And if you compare in the Netherlands, all right, some people, the, the, the top four, the top eight in the world, water polo players make their money out of playing water polo. That's all they have. They don't have, uh, most of them don't have an educational background. The only thing, the only thing is they play water polo. And when they stop playing, they will become a coach. Uh -huh. And uh, so it's, it's, for me, it was more the experience. And then, uh, yeah, being with the team, being in the Olympic Games, and uh, that was, yeah, that was in general, that was the, the best experience. And we knew that we will not compete for the first place. You knew that going into you, the tournament? You knew that because in, in water polo, it's not like football. Uh -huh. Football, everybody can beat everybody. If you have your best day, you can beat, you beat. But if, if there's a lot of scoring going on, a stronger country almost always takes the luck out of it. Yeah, yeah it takes the oh, luck out of it. Oh, wow. So that is, it's... You don't see really big surprises. The level of the teams together, there must be close. Okay. There is not. There's almost never like a suddenly that uh, the Netherlands beats Hungary uh, or beats uh, Serbia. That, that's not, that, gonna, that's happen. not that's, gonna happen. That's what I appreciate about wrestling. You know, not to keep turning it back to wrestling, but yeah, no, you know, no, even no, if you're getting your butt kicked, you always have a chance to maybe just catch the other guy and pin him. Yeah. You know, and so like, there's always that luck factor yeah. that maybe I'll get lucky, maybe I'll get lucky. Usually the better guy wins. Yeah. But, but yeah. in uh, yeah, what about it's not that, yeah, that, yeah. that it's so slim that luck. Sure. It's, uh, it's actually it's actually nice. It's yeah, cool. yeah. Right. You have three kids now. Yeah. What do you wish for them to go the same kind of direction or? For sports I, or? Of course, if you look in my heart, I want them to compete in something. Yeah. But I don't want to push them into a direction. I want that they have fun, right? They, they need to have fun. And now, especially now, they're still young. And uh, also now in the CCI, I just try, what do you want to do, right? Just mm -hmm. do that. All right, you want to do handball? Shoot, go handball. Oh, you want to do basketball? Just do handball. Oh, you want to do ballet? Just do ballet. So it's, it's, it's I'm not, we're not pushing. And, and, and I think they don't have the thrive yet. My son ha is very competitive, uh, so that might, uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, my youngest one, I think she will be very competitive, but she's not. She's six years old, so it's not there yet. Mm -hmm. But it might develop. My oldest one, yeah, everything is fine, right? Okay. She, uh, <laughs> if she plays, it's fine. But it's still, she's uh, yeah, a decent swimmer, and I still, yeah, only ten years old. Maybe that will grow. Yeah, yeah. So, she uh, might find a passion for her love yeah. for, for swimming. And uh, if that's the case, we support her any any way. And that's uh, yeah, that's how I see it. And uh, hopefully. Yeah, like I said, don't specialize too early. Let them do a lot of things, experience a lot of things, because mm -hmm. even in an individual sport like swimming, you will learn to be as a part of a team. If you talk to the people in the 2000 Olympic Games, mm -hmm. I th we, we got, I think, Inge de Bruyne won the first gold medal in the, if you're swimming, and that boosted the whole yeah. Olympic team, All right? right? So she could Good do boy. it, everybody <laughs> can do it. Like uh, Peter van der Hoogel. One of the most successful yeah. ones. We yeah, had, right? yeah, the cyc uh, cyclists. So it's all, all uh, Leontine van Moor. So everybody's like, you get boosts and they got a gold medal. So the, the, and that's yeah, being part of a team and also that. Did that you feel that as the whole Dutch team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Team, yes, yeah yes, there was yes. like one one big team as a, as a big yes, sport. Yes, yeah, yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Wow. Especially the, really more, cool. the more goal is winning and, and we're not a big squad. Yeah, yeah. So you are always around each other. Right? You're based in the similar quadrant as uh, all the others play. So you walk around, you see each other. Wow. Uh, cool. It does remind me of like a small school. You know, it is small school. All the athletes are together. You're your own yeah. like, just squad. You know, even like your basketball players, your football players, they're just like, they're yeah. like a group of friends. Yeah. Even so, if we you know, go down to China, you go as Mongolia, right? Yeah, you, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, yeah. I, I find that our kids, when I was at ASU, would be much closer when we're in the same division, when we go to China, yeah. right? when we play in UBAC, we're enemies. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then yeah, we go to China, it's like, oh, hey, I see yeah, you yeah. other Mongolian guys. Yeah. 
That's um, good. I think that's very important that you have a good atmosphere. And that will boost the, the overall yeah, uh, sense and feeling of what you so have. So you are happy for them, right? Absolutely. And yeah. then as a country, as a, as a, sometimes you see that when kids are not happy for their own teammates. So yeah. these kids, they win an MVP and then some of their teammates are not happy because they won it. But yeah. you were happy for those people winning gold yeah. medals, yeah. but you didn't win it, right? It's, it's very interesting. Yeah, you feel you're part of that making history, right? And you're part of that whole big bubble of making Amazing. history. That's so amazing. now that you're, Jeff mentioned a little bit a father, but now that you're a teacher, uh, what kind of lessons do you bring from your time uh, playing professionally, playing at a high level, and now skills. you're working with athletes that, you know, some of some of the kids in my class, they don't have hardly an athletic bone in their body. How do you, how do you pare down now to, to working with lower level athletes? You just, I, I think what I'm trying now is to have them create or try to develop some kind of passion they have for, for sports in general and let them enjoy playing sports. And it doesn't, it could be on every, uh, any level you have. Sure. And, uh, and there is such a huge gap between school and the professional level. Yeah. But you, cannot, you cannot compare the two. You cannot approach the students the same way because they, they, they don't have the same commitment. They don't have the same goals. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you have a few students who, that, then yeah, you will try to monitor that and, and develop that into something. But then they will, in the end, they have to leave a small school. They need to bigger, go to clubs outside yeah. the school and, yeah. and, and yeah. see what their level is. We always talk about sports as a tool, right? To learn life skills. What are some of the most important lessons you learned from your professional back? You use it now in everyday life. One is I always say you never give up, and and be uh, yeah yeah you develop some kind of confidence. You know you uh, have to when you go go out there when you're gonna start playing you have to have confidence that you can yeah. do it, and uh, that, that's a sort of confident. Uh, I think also that you have to realize that practice is so important, and also the way you go into practice. And I think that's where students don't even realize. That I always say when I'm training, right, mm -hmm. if you you can't do in a game if you don't practice it. You have mm -hmm. to practice as yeah. as is it is a game. Yeah. Uh, and if that's uh, and as, a, as a coach, as a, as a teacher, you want to develop that they try to do their best and you talk to them more. And uh, what you can't do, what you uh, you can't just say, right, you're out of the team because you did not show up for three times. Those you just have to be very flexible. But in that flexibility, you still also try to create some kind of commitment mm -hmm. from the students that they are prepared, are mm -hmm. prepared to do that extra week, prepared to bring their stuff every time. Um, yeah, so that's it's more like you're, you're trying to facilitate a, a space where they can thrive yeah. Yeah. in their level, in their way of uh, yeah thinking of how the sport should run. Okay. Uh, no, I. <clears throat> I found that too, even just coming from the States and teaching there and then coming here and coaching. You know, coaching there where sports is a huge part of the school culture and kids are in it, they go to summer camps, They some of them are one sport athletes, so they just train that sport year round. And then we come here where it's a little bit more relaxed approach. It's mm -hmm. a couple days a week we have training. Um, and there's a, a much broader range of athletes, you know, in our, our U19 teams yeah. even up. You know, some kids are very serious, very good athletes, focused. Some kids are just, they just want something to do after school and have some fun. You know, their friends are doing it, so why not? I'll try it. And being a smaller school, yeah, we've got to kind of meet them where they're at. And yeah, I try to bring those, the very uh, people who are very fanatic and yeah, really yeah. into it. They need to realize I'm not in uh, the NBA. I have my teammates are maybe not at the same level, but that's, that's their experience. They need yeah. to... Uh, yeah, develop that skill to deal with yeah, that. What's they literally had that conversation yesterday with an athlete? <laughs> you know, he doesn't have the same skills you have, but this is what he brings to the table. You know, so your skill, you have to do even more your best. So if you want to, the volleyball, right? We have yeah. to, you have a tournament yeah. coming yes. up. So if you want him to spike, your your setup must be perfect. Yeah, and if you don't do it perfect, you can only be angry at yourself that you have to improve that, and not on the person who. Maybe he does not have that skill set. So that the only thing you can do is try to make others better by playing uh, yeah, your utmost and making sure that everything you do is as good as you can for the uh, person next to you. Can you. When you were a professional and now you're not anymore, 
it wasn't hard to transition from doing everything to, to become the best in, in water polo and to be professional to now. Do you miss that? <laughs> no, what, what I miss is the uh, emotions, the explosions of, of celebration after ah, winning yeah. something. So that, that I don't miss really, I don't miss the practices. <laughs> uh, right? I don't miss losing, I don't miss that at all. But the, the, the thing that you you yeah you win a, a very important game, you score the you score a penalty. And People are happy. That's that's yeah. yeah so right. that, that's that, that emotion. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that it's very difficult. Uh, or I don't think it is. For me, I, I don't have that in, in any in any other thing. I'm still looking at what gives me the most uh, satisfaction. But that that emotion that that's something I miss. But the rest it's. But I also was so fanatic. I said I stopped completely. Okay. Yeah. I didn't say oh, you couldn't go down. Let's, let's, and let's play a little trim bit. it down because I've seen that. And the only thing I would have been that would be very moody and more aggressive in my play because I could have done that a year ago. But that was when you trained right. six hours a day, and now you can't do that anymore. So you get frustrated with yourself, and you get frustrated with your teammate. So I said, okay, I'm going to stop completely. Wow. I'm not doing anything. Uh, That's not easy. That's not Sorry. easy. It's ego, you gotta drop that and boom, stop, right? It's hot. I know yeah. I struggled when like my college career was over. Just having like you know, when you have goals, when you have lofty goals, you have a reason to get out of bed and train. And then when that's gone, you kinda have this like you've got to find another sense of motivation, right? And kind of another reason to get up and work out and uh, it, Keep right. yeah. it, it helped me that I moved from, uh, so where I was based last year, I was based in Greece. Yeah. So I moved to completely, I moved with my uh, yeah, now wife, uh, my girlfriend at the time, to uh, Thailand. Completely different something, setup. Something different. Completely different. Sure. And so I was not back to the Netherlands where my team would have been pulling me, my old team, of course, if I would be in the Netherlands, every team would have been pulled me and come on play and come on play and they probably said yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, so then. I said no. I'm not. I just stopped there. And, uh, we moved to yeah, a completely different scenery. And I That's think awesome. that definitely helps yeah, because yeah. you're you immediately pulled out of the whole of everything what you let's say was normal, and it's, it's good. Like yeah. rip, ripping a bandage wow. and then and keep on going with your life. Yeah, we're going to the end of our podcast. Um, we our audience are a lot of student athletes that we talk to, and uh, what would you say to them? For those kids who want to reach that high level in sports. What, what should they do in order to get there? Always reflect on your practice. See, all right, did I really give my utmost? And it doesn't always have to be that you have to run 100% on the practice, but you always have in mind, all right, so now I'm giving 90. Why I'm giving 90? Because in the game, this is what I will do, so that when I get in volleyball, when I have to do the spike, I still have enough sure. energy to do okay. the, the correct okay. spike. Um, yeah, never give up. Right, always push yourself to the limit in every practice, and that could be different right? physically or emotionally. You have to push yourself, yeah, yeah. And then, when you're doing that, listen to your body, uh, what your body can handle at certain moments, and make sure that you're still at school, make sure that you don't have the stress of schoolwork, make sure you finish. And I'm not saying that you have, you have to be an A plus or a top student in uh, academics, but make sure you do your things. But so that it doesn't is a burden on you when you go to practice. Finish your things, arrange everything accordingly. Uh, I say if you're average on academics, you're fine because you get that extra boost from yeah. uh, from your sport. Yeah. They give you the self confidence wow. for the rest of your life. And parents, maybe you'll say, "Oh, what is he saying?" I don't know if you're <laughs> but it's true. If your son or your daughter wants to push yourself in sports, then academics is still important. But it doesn't have to be the A plus students all the time. No. And, and there is a combination, but make sure that you take away the stress of the exam by having yourself organized so that you can give yourself every practice. That's great. That's great. That's, you know, it echoes uh, the thing, same things that I preach to the teams that I coach. Just eliminate those distractions. Yeah. If you're constantly getting nagged about your homework, it's just another thing that's going to be on the back of your mind and you're not focused on playing basketball or playing football. Because Definitely. you use the same skills, right? To get yeah. both done, so it's yeah. important. Definitely. Okay. Well, well yeah. I, uh, thanks for coming on. Oh, yeah, it's, it's good to officially be here. Yeah, it's fun. The coaches for coaches. You gave a session that I was able yeah. to sit down on. Um, so if anyone's watching on YouTube, uh, check out some of the other videos. Yes. Kerbin gave a session. Um, 
just on uh, skills and primary. Yeah, yeah, so, physical literacy. That's, yeah. I think that's the, the basic of uh, primary kids building skill set for to become even a better athlete in any sports. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we so, were very lucky to have you on the show, uh, Herben, and uh, thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah, appreciate right. your time. Yeah. Thanks. See you all tomorrow. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, 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 yeah,